Hello, welcome back to the Lizelle Wellbeing YouTube channel with me, Lizelle. Well, today I'm going to be joined by Dr. Samantha Wild, GP and Bupa's clinical lead for women's health, for a subject that even in spite of all the chat around menopause in the news and on social media, many of us still seem to shy away from. Yeah, we're going to be discussing all things sex, specifically how menopause and its symptoms can impact us at this time. Well, we're talking about from loss of libido to low mood to vaginal dryness, diminished self-esteem. Menopause really can impact just so many areas of our lives, affecting not only ourselves, but putting strain on our relationships too. But there are plenty of things that we can do to help us reclaim our sex lives through menopause and beyond. Yeah, bring on that better second half after all. Well, to guide us through it all is the fabulous Dr. Samantha Wild. Welcome back, Sam. It's very good to have you here for another vlog. Hello, Liz. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be back, especially to talk about such an important topic. Um, as we've just discussed before, the taboo around menopause has shifted in recent years, thanks to many high profile people opening up the conversation. However, when it comes to sex and menopause, women are often still struggling to talk about the difficulties they may be experiencing and they just don't ask for help. Mm -hmm. um, in a survey by the British Menopause Society, over a third of women interviewed reported a loss of sex drive, but fewer than a third sought help, even mm -hmm. though it's something that can cause distress and unhappiness. Other surveys have shown that it's an issue for 50 percent or thought to be even higher at 88 percent. Um, and according to another su survey, eight out of 10 women experiencing marriage difficulties said the symptoms of the perimenopause or menopause put a strain on their family life. 70% blame the menopause for their divorce or marriage problems, with some saying it increased arguments. Wow. So this is a significant issue um, and I'm so pleased yeah. to have the opportunity to discuss <laughs> this with you today. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm so looking forward to all of this. It's going to be another excellent, much needed conversation, I think. So first of all, I think it'd be really helpful to discuss what I guess is the sort of biological side of menopause and how it can impact our bodies and our confidence, specifically in terms of our sex lives. I agree. And I always reassure my patients that it's entirely normal to experience a decrease in sexual desire or libido, which is the medical term for it, during the menopause. And it's not a reflection of their relationships. It's their body responding to low estrogen and testosterone levels, which affect women in various ways, having an impact both physically and emotionally. And when you consider the changes that may occur, it's not a surprise that sex drive may take a hit. So I'll start with some of the physical symptoms that may be experienced into the perimenopause, menopause and beyond, and then I'll move on to the emotional. So hot flushes and night sweats are very common symptoms affecting up to 75% of women. Um, and understandably, a sudden hot flush or palpitations during intimate moments can make it very difficult to get comfortable and relax. And sweating at night leads to discomfort and sleep disturbances, which can affect someone's energy levels and their desire for intimacy. And there's lots of other symptoms too that we know can affect sleep and mood, such as itchy skin, painful joints, headaches and migraines, which are obviously not going to motivate a woman to be in the mood for sex. Um, some women experience touch avoidance. Their skin feels more sensitive, wow. so they don't feel like getting close or intimate. Another very common symptom affecting at least two thirds of women we think, but we know that women just don't like to talk about is vaginal dryness. And this occurs because estrogen usually helps with lubrication and the tissue elasticity. So a lack of this can result in the tissue becoming very thin, tight, sore and irritated so that sex is very painful. And again, it's not surprising that this is not going to encourage a woman to want to be intimate. Um, some may also get associated urinary tract changes. Uh, so this can result in incontinence, which may cause fears of leakage during sex or tiredness if needing to get up a lot in the night to go to pass urine. Mm. It can cause prolapses or urinary tract infections, which cause discomfort and pain. Other menopausal changes in the body can affect some women's self-image and confidence. So, for example, lower estrogen levels can cause a woman's weight to redistribute, particularly around the abdomen. And she may find that she gains weight and struggles to lose it again. Her skin may change, resulting in sagging, fine lines and wrinkles. She may start to suffer with acne and there might also be an increase in facial hair. So, understandably, if she isn't feeling good about herself, then this can have a knock on on her sex life. And we've talked before about how common it is for the menopause to affect mental well-being too. 
and feeling anxious or stressed or that you're struggling to juggle various responsibility with aging parents, mm. children or teenagers can leave you with little desire or time for sex. So women may also be worrying about what is the matter with them if they haven't realised it's the menopause, losing sleep and getting anxious um, that they're suffering with dementia or a cancer. So again, mm. the last thing on their minds is intimacy. I think it's also important to mention that as, as we age, our medication use also starts to increase. Uh, we may suffer with ill health that can affect sex drive. So antidepressants, blood pressure tablets, painkillers, antihistamines, and many other common treatments can have an effect. Mm. And this is often not discussed when they are prescribed. Some women are not affected at all by this decrease in libido and they're comfortable in themselves. Uh, they're not feeling that this is affecting their overall sexuality or their quality of life. But for others, this does become a problem, changing their sense of sexuality and how they feel about themselves. And do you think a lot of women are aware of these issues that are being caused by the menopause? It's such a long list. I think it's better than it was. Um, and I would say this is definitely due to celebrities such as the amazing Lisa Snowden uh, being more open about what they have experienced. So we really need to say a huge thank you to them for being so honest and breaking down some of the stigma. Um, however, not all women are empowered yet. Um, may, many just sadly accept that this is the way of life for them. Um, this is the way that it is and, and they've just got to get on with things. They just feel too embarrassed to ask for help. They may not know that there are treatments to manage their symptoms. And there's still also some societal and cultural issues as well, mm. I think. Um, you know, women find themselves in a, in a pleaser role so that they place their wants and needs behind that of others and they mm -hmm. don't articulate what they desire. And the historical idea is that middle-aged people um, shouldn't or, or don't have sex. Um, so again, this leads them to accept that this is normal and that they're somehow in the wrong to want to address it. Uh, it gets pushed down the list of symptoms to address with their doctor. Um, and so that's why we've made our initial menopause appointments 45 minutes yeah. so that there's plenty of time to really relax into the consultation and discuss all their concerns. Uh, yeah. We often find that if a woman won't raise the issue herself, she's almost relieved when asked about it, right. as we've shown that it is OK to talk about and that we're here to help with that, too. Yeah, I think that prompting is just so helpful, isn't it? Absolutely. How do you think that this impacts a woman's relationship? You know, do you have any advice here for partners, perhaps, or for women on how to open up the conversation with their other half? I do. So as you've said at the start, it's not unusual at this time of life for relationships to break down, which is really due to a lack of communication about what is happening. So often a woman's um, she changes due to the symptoms that she's experiencing. Mm. So her partner's confused or upset and doesn't know how to respond. And they drift apart, ending up in separate beds, you know, not knowing really yeah. what's gone wrong and, and both wondering if they still love each other. So open communication with your partner is the key to maintaining your connection. Um, so I know it may feel difficult but I would advise that you initiate an honest conversation about the symptoms that you're experiencing, how they're making you feel and how you think this is impacting your relationship. So, for example, if you have been feeling irritable, let your partner know that this isn't due to them, um, but right. it's due to your heightened emotions. If you're struggling with sex, explain why you feel this way. And if you can educate yourself about the menopause and its impact on sexual health so that you understand the changes happening in your body, then this can empower you and more confidently ensure that your partner understands that too. Mm. Um, for partners, um, I would just tell them to listen. It's as simple <laughs> as that. Everyone's experience of the menopause is different. So ask them how they are feeling and listen when they speak to you um, about what they're going through. Remember, they may not feel comfortable to open up about all their symptoms straight away. But by listening to them, it lets them know that you're there to support them and give them the confidence to tell you more when they're ready. Um, be patient. Connecting with your partner without the pressure of the goal being penetrative sex can reboot your relationship. Mm. And you can be intimate in lots of other ways, such as cuddling, kissing and massage um, and explore new ways to connect, um, whether that's through shared hobbies, meaningful conversations or simply spending quality time together as a couple. Mm. For many women, they need that emotional connection and trust to be there before a physical one. Um, and it's been said that a woman's brain is her most important sexual organ. So it's really important <laughs> that you that. take things slow yeah. until she's feeling comfortable again. I know it's very true, isn't it? Yeah. Um, don't try to be their doctor. 
Um, whilst I would definitely commend a partner educating themselves about the menopause, your loved one doesn't need medical advice from you. They need your support and encouragement and let the healthcare professionals manage the rest. Um, so in fact, what you do is probably far more important than what the doctor can do as them getting the hormones right. Again, it's just a very small piece as part of, you know, a huge complex jigsaw for many women. Um, and it's also important just to say that age can affect libido too. So many people find that their partner is also experiencing similar changes at this mm. point in life, whether that be a partner of the opposite or the same sex. So having these open conversations can be a relief for both partners to help sure. find new ways to explore intimacy together. Sure, I think that's really, really good advice and very true, actually, what you say about hormones only being one part of the jigsaw, but support is just so key. In terms of treatment then, what options do women have? So after that conversation about um, trying to improve their communication, we always talk about lifestyle management next. Um, so it's not unusual for me to see a woman in clinic who's felt too tired or achy to exercise. They might be eating badly, so they've gained weight as well. They could be self-medicating with alcohol and all mm. of these will make their menopause symptoms worse and impact on how much sex they want to have. So taking some control back, eating healthily, exercising regularly and reducing alcohol intake can help reduce stress, improve sleep and improve their mood so that they feel better about themselves. Um, exercising with their partner or experimenting mm. with cooking more healthy meals together um, may also help with reconnecting um, and a way for their partner to support them as well. Um, other lifestyle strategies include stopping smoking, avoiding products that can irritate the vagina, such as shower gels and bubble baths, using sex toys and doing pelvic floor exercises. Um, as a GP, I would also review any of those medications that they may be taking that I mentioned earlier can play a part and consider alternatives if necessary and also ensure that other medical conditions are well managed. Mm -hmm. And something that's readily accessible over the counter, but again, not well known about, but they can be very effective of vaginal lubricants and moisturizers for vaginal dryness. So just as we moisturize the skin on our face to help prevent mm. dryness, we can do the same for our vaginas too. And so these are usually long acting and so they only need to be applied every two to three days. Right. Lubricants are used when having sex and they're applied just before and they can significantly enhance the comfort and pleasure during intimacy. Um, it's important to ensure that the products used are free from irritants and allergens by checking the ingredients. So I always have a discussion about this. Mm. Try to avoid ones that contain glycerin, glycol and parabens. And mm -hmm. just to be aware that oil based lubricants can make condoms less effective. Right. Um, but this if this isn't an issue, it can be more helpful if one partner used a water based lubricant and the other uses an oil based lubricant, wow. what we've termed as slide and glide. They work better together. <laughs> really? I love that phrase. Yeah. <laughs> That's a new one for me. <laughs> <laughs> Vaginal estrogens can also be used. So you apply estrogen directly to where it's needed. And these come in three forms, pessaries, creams and gels and rings. So pessaries tends to be used daily for the first two to three weeks, but just twice weekly after that. And this is the same with creams and gels. And they can also be used together. So you put the cream around the vulval area and you insert the pessary inside the vagina. The ring is made of silicon and it's inserted inside the vagina by the woman to provide estrogen for three months and then it needs to be replaced and it can be left in or, or taken out when having sex. And some women are able to buy vaginal estrogen tablets over the counter now without a prescription mm -hmm. if they fulfill certain criteria. Very small amounts of estrogen are absorbed into the blood when using it this way. So women with a history of breast cancer are often able to consider using this too. Um, they can really suffer after their treatments with mm, vaginal dryness. Sure. Um, so really important for women to, to be able to access this. Hormone replacement therapy obviously aims to alleviate a woman's estrogen levels um, and relieve symptoms. And we give estrogen and progesterone, as you know, if a woman has a womb, um, so she hasn't had a hysterectomy. Mm -hmm. Alleviating the physical and emotional symptoms that we've discussed can contribute to low libido, will obviously improve them for many once they've replaced those hormones. Some women will also benefit from having testosterone therapy, usually in the form of a gel or a cream. Mm -hmm. Testosterone is made in the ovaries and adrenal glands, and it contributes to our libido, sexual arousal and orgasm. 
And like estrogen, testosterone levels decline as your body gets older. Testosterone treatments are currently not licensed for women in the UK. However, it is advocated by the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence after other options have been exhausted and in addition to HRT. And we would normally give women a trial for six months to see if it benefits them. Mm. It's also important to mention though that HRT itself can decrease libido. Again, this isn't something we talk about. Sure. If a woman is taking estrogen orally, this can stimulate production of a protein called sex hormone binding globulin in the body, which lowers testosterone mm. further. So using estrogen transdermally through the skin via a patch, a gel or a spray can prevent this. Mm. And finally, we discuss cognitive behavioural therapy, psychosexual counselling and couples therapy, which may be needed to help address any issues or psychological barriers affecting the relationship, which ultimately, again, may enhance sexual satisfaction. Gosh, I mean, there's just so much there, Sam, and, and you know, I've, I've learnt some nuggets, so really, really helpful. Thank you. With the Bupa menopause plan in particular, then, how is that supporting women that may be experiencing issues with their sex life? So our menopause plan product is specifically designed to support women through this life stage of perimenopause, menopause and postmenopause and all the symptoms that may be experienced at this time. We offer easily accessible longer appointments with a GP who has received Bupa approved additional menopause training and can provide reliable information and National Institute for Health and Care Excellence approved treatment. We find that by sending out a pre-appointment questionnaire to complete and a menopause symptom checker, this re really enables our GPs to have the detailed overview they require to fully assess a woman's concerns and focus on what is important for them. And this symptom checker specifically asks about vaginal dryness and sexual problems. So it can take mm. away some of that embarrassment about raising this if a woman has already right. indicated it is an issue. Yeah. Um, a 45 minute consultation also ensures that it's not rushed with plenty of time to explore the importance of good communication and treatment options that we've discussed today. And together we can create a mutually agreed holistic menopause treatment plan that's right for them. So this will always include those lifestyle measures that can be taken and for most hormone replacement therapy. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's definitely not a one size fits all approach. It's very individualized. And whilst reaching out and having that initial first appointment is really important, aftercare is equally as, as important. So we include a three month follow up with the same GP where possible to assess how a woman is responding to her management plan and answer any questions or concerns that she may have. It can help a woman to feel at ease to open up more if she can establish a relationship and a good rapport with one doctor. It may also be at this stage that further appointments are considered if she is still suffering with low libido and, and ultimately we need to try uh, a trial of, of testosterone. Mm. And we'd also ensure that she has her HRT optimised first so that we know she's been given enough estrogen. Testosterone just won't work otherwise. Wow. And following the initial appointment, we give women access for one year to our Anytime Houseline Nurse Support, who are there 24-7, 365 days a year. And all these nurses have been upskilled in menopause care too. And they're an invaluable resource to help deal with any further concerns or worry, worries that the women uh, may have. Mm. Um, and eventually, I would hope that we can help women enter a very positive time for their sex life, which mm. is sexually liberating. For some women, no longer experiencing heavy or painful periods can be a huge relief, as well as feeling more relaxed and fun if someone's been trying to avoid pregnancy throughout yeah. their reproductive years. They may benefit from more privacy because children have fled the nest mm -hmm. um, and use this time to experiment using their newfound sexual freedom. So sex definitely doesn't need to become a memory and it can be enjoyed into the latter years. So, you know, this doesn't all need to be negative. Yeah. It can be very positive once the right help has been received. I love that. And I love, you know, ending on a positive note always. Thank you, Sam. I mean, it's really good to chat. Such helpful advice. And I'm sure that, you know, people might actually want to replay this, having listened through it once and make some notes. I know that I will. Thank you very much for joining us today on the Lizard Wellbeing YouTube channel. So good to have you back. So lastly, where can people go to find out more information? 
So you can find some more information on our website. So that's bupa.co.uk forward slash health. Uh, you can access our Women's Health Hub uh, there, which is, has a wealth of information yeah. and also book an appointment for our menopause plan. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So there you have it. Well, what do you think? As ever, do let us know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, and I think that this topic is a really important one that we do need to start talking about a lot more. So please share this one far and wide with all your girlfriends. All the resources and the links that you need from today's episode will be in the video description below. So until the next time we chat, go very well. Bye bye. <laughs>